If you want to learn something about God, shut your mouth and listen to me for a minute. Many, many children healed. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because the growth cells have stopped. I don't make this stuff up. Behold the atheist's nightmare. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Why do they teach every other theory in science except creation? Warlocks are enemies of God. You know, no one's ever going to convince me. That, uh, that the Word of God is, is not true. You know if you put Jesus Christ first that He'll look after all your bills. And so the devil said, okay, it's a deal. And if you want to tell me how to live my life, it better line up with the Word of God or shut your mouth. I'm loaded, I'm pregnant with miracles. What do you believe? Send us the cash. Welcome to the Bible Dumb Podcast. This is the podcast where two atheists read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'm your host, Davey Hell. I'm Jesse Hell. And uh, today we are very excited because we have our first special guest. Uh, as mentioned last time, welcome to the podcast, Steve. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. So excited to have you on. Steve is a very old and dear friend. Um, and uh, as always, special thanks to executive producer, Terry Lynn Bradford. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, Terry. Thanks, Terry. <laughs> All right. So, Steve, I am super excited to have you here. And I uh, was dying to force you into, I think, like a thing that we should do. Like when we have special guests is I think a requirement should be a confession. Oh, that sounds good. So a uh, confession is our, <laughs> yeah, we both had confession. So yours is like about the book you were reading. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have more, I'm sure. But it was a good one. Uh, so confessions is just story time. You know, tell us like what was like your experience with the church, the Bible growing up, or just any kind of like story that stands out from when you were a kid and tell us after we play our little sound effect. Well, uh, <laughs> we're professionals. I was uh, raised by self-described agnostics Neither one of my parents would describe themselves as atheists necessarily. Uh, I don't, my mother, I guess, is somewhat spiritual. My father, not so much. I think he just thinks atheist is too politically charged a word. Mm. <laughs> but um, we were, we weren't raised. Me and my brother were not raised to not believe in God. Just God was never brought up in the house, and so. It was kind of a rude awakening when I found out about Christianity. <laughs> I spent the night over at a friend's house on a Saturday, and then early Sunday morning, their parents come in and start poking us. It's like, oh, right, get ready, we're going to church. I'm like, we're going to what? <laughs> Do you have your church clothes? And I was like, oh, I have my what, what? <laughs> that sounds a lot I like had, I had one of those experience. experiences. Yeah. Did your parents, like describe themselves as anything like yeah. atheist or agnostic they're just not religious or didn't talk about it didn't talk about it huh. what was that yeah. church like it was a catholic oh that's uh, like the weirdest kind yeah it was it was <laughs> odd um <laughs> no offense I won't catholic. there's a lot of kneeling and a lot of standing and a lot of kneeling a lot of standing a lot of chanting a lot of singing like languages they're long dead <laughs> and i was very confused <laughs> as it was happening just looking around all those people like children and adults around me just all seem to know about this guy <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea Wait, what is the is the guy about. god or jesus uh all of the above <laughs> <laughs> yeah i went to a wedding in a catholic church and that was my experience too like lots and lots of up and down it's like calisthenics it was <laughs> interesting but, uh, i remember going home afterwards and had a lot of questions for my parents and it's just like all right i feel like you guys have been holding back on me 
because there's apparently this Jesus guy and he's magical and a lot of people are really worried about what he thinks about them. Uh, what's the deal? And my parents said, well, you know, we we don't really subscribe to that religion and that belief, but we didn't want to make that decision for you and your brother. So if you want, you can read the Bible and, you know, <laughs> see what you think about it. And at the time, I already was big into Greek mythology and Norse mythology. Uh -huh. Like I was reading Bullfinches and all that. And I was like, all right, well, uh, yeah. So I went to the school library and checked out a copy of the Bible. And I'm sure the librarian was super happy. <laughs> you want to predict how far he got? Two pages. It can't be far. It can't be. Oh, I, I phased out hard after the begat begat. Uh. <laughs> I told you they're famous. Yeah, it. Uh, uh, but I started skipping ahead, you know, just like, all right, there's got to be some meat here. And I started looking for it's like, where are the good stories? You know, where's like the Hercules slays the lion shit? And then like mm. go through and then it's like, oh, um, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind I'm of, sure there'd be okay, some treats so in what store. What do you think of the Bible? And I was like, well, I prefer Greek and Norse mythology. It's yeah. yeah. Exciting. And they're like, yeah, that's kind of what we thought too. Hmm. So did you ever feel like ostracized in any way because of your lack of religion? Uh, eventually. At that age, I was still a bit naive to it. I was like, oh, you know, a lot of people believe in this weird thing they like this story more than these other stories which uh i mean okay that, that's fine some people mm. like country music i don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it wasn't until later on that i started seeing the ramifications of what it means in society and i think it was the first time i stayed at a friend's house who had baptist parents and we went to baptist church mm. where i had my eyes really open to just oh there, there are people out there who think my entire family are going to suffer in eternity. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Their beliefs. And it's like, if you don't believe in God, you're a sinner. You're going to burn in hell. It's like, hey, you're talking about my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never really went to a church that was like that. Like, all of the churches I went to as a kid were Methodist, I believe. I believe all of them were Methodists. You know, my friend, I went to friend church a lot with different friend groups and stuff. And they were all just, just cool, singing, holding hands, wearing t-shirts, <laughs> like matching colored t-shirts, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't really go much into the hell shit. My friends who uh, had Methodist parents and with a Methodist church, those were always the most easygoing, like the most tolerable where it's just like, all right, well, you just got to, you know, sing some songs and, you know, the preacher or minister or whatever they call themselves in that denomination be like, uh, man, isn't Jesus great? He just, he just wants you to be great. <laughs> yeah. Guys. Yeah. That's pretty much what I got. There's got to be like some kind of fun game to play with like denomination bingo or something. <laughs> like, like I've got Episcopalian. Just like, there's so many different. Got snake handlers over here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Steve. That was enlightening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, last time, do you remember what we talked about? Circumcision. <laughs> yeah, I can't forget that. So uh, yeah, last time uh, God said to Abram, you are so cool. <laughs> I was you know, just the the coolest guy around. I'm just gonna like add a syllable to your name for no reason. You're Abraham now. Yeah. Your wife's name, change her name too. And I'm gonna give you all the lands of Canaan. And uh, also cut off your foreskin. <laughs> just just cut it off. Cut off the foreskin of all your kids. Cut off the foreskin of all your slaves. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> this, is, this is something I wanted to ask you about. Wait, Steve. but what do they call them? Oh, people that you paid for with your money or some, you know, same thing. But people under his power were the people basically that had to cut off their foreskins. So <laughs> we mentioned you in the last podcast. 
like we were so excited to talk to you about is because we've talked about this before. <laughs> You've brought up a couple stories. <laughs> yes. Yes, and also uh, I knew you were going to ask me about this, so I did a little bit of research. Oh, good. Add on top of it. Uh, let's see here. As far as the original reasons why people uh, did circumcision, it's not necessarily really well known. Um, God said to. Uh, but but a, a lot of different cultures from a lot of different places uh, did it and did it for different reasons and still do it for different reasons. Uh, some of them were for cleanliness and um, like disease factors on that. Uh, some of them were for like pain endurance and like rites of passage. Oh, and, which was pretty wild. Pain endurance, really? Yep. Like, there's got to be a non permanent way. Like just just go to jujitsu or something. Yeah, that or you know just don't have trial by pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an yeah. option <laughs> like for, for doctor, okay you know so and maybe maybe a good thing to do i mean i'm not here to judge uh, but uh but i'm judging uh uh yeah but there's the cleanliness factor the egyptians did it um it was done in africa it was done by um you know the israelites so far still done by Israelites uh, the it became very prominent for a long period of time and then became less so in um, Europe and uh, those areas due to Roman influence because they were not a fan of circumcision mm -hmm. and they thought that alteration of the you know natural form was not the way to go and that a man was only truly naked when his foreskin was pulled back so <laughs> okay naked dong out but you're still modest oh very nice <laughs> all right i can get behind that <laughs> yeah. but um yeah i mean that uh, as far as health benefits nowadays there are uh, many studies showing that you are less likely to receive or transmit stds if you're circumcised okay i mean so there is that uh, uh, i've also heard that like you could also wear a condom. Oh, good. yeah. <laughs> good point. That's an option. <laughs> yeah. Or like, so like, one of the big beefs I have with this is the excuse that everybody rolls out or they're like, it makes it easier to clean. And surely it can't be any harder to clean than say, I don't know, your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> or any other like hard to reach part of your body like it i mean bible dumb podcast at gmail.com let me know <laughs> are you uncircumcised do you struggle with cleaning your body <laughs> i mean it's right I, there it's in the thin arm's reach <laughs> i would say it's probably not difficult it's probably easy enough however i will say that anytime you have an infolded flap of skin that creates a crevice which is dark and moist and warm mm. you're creating mm. an area that's going to get funky okay okay so you have to be uh, like extra vigilant i suppose to make sure <laughs> things are clean and dry before put back in place <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> good good lessons yeah, and there's you... also being put back in place there's a uh, famosis and paraphimosis but the famosis is when the aperture of the uh, skin on the hood becomes too small for the uh, penis, especially when erect, to uh, get out of. He's doing hand motions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That can cause a, a lot of uh, pain, as you might imagine. And then there's paraphimosis is when the foreskin is pulled back behind the glands of the head and it's not put back in place and it shrinks down cutting off blood supply to the glands and then you get oh. necrotic penis nature's cockering <laughs> yeah exactly just you know a couple sizes <laughs> so uh <laughs> yeah so all right that's enough ding dong talk i think <laughs> For, for the most part it's 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 cosmetic and it's ritualistic like there mm. there are some benefits but at the same time there are accidents i think the yeah i think the accident rate is somewhere between uh somewhere around like 0.4 percent 
which is not high. Small, but it still means that out of every thousand dicks that get cut, four of them have problems. So mm. that's uh, when you think about it that way, it's not completely insignificant. And so there's there's issues there. Uh, for my thing, as a, a nurse who works in an emergency room, I am very biased <laughs> ah. because if you come in to my nursery room and I have to deal with your junk and you're uncircumcised, I am bummed the fuck out. <laughs> Not fun. Most of the time, if I have to deal with a guy's junk, it's probably because they're older or infirmed, so they're probably not taking very good care of said junk, so mm. it's just a horror older. show. It's It's bad. And also sometimes you have guys who, for whatever reason, have very small penises or the penises have shrunk as they've gotten older. Oh, does that happen? Uh, you got to get off. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I haven't experienced yeah. that. <laughs> well, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they have their foreskin. Uh, sometimes actually more pronounced than their penis. Their penis is like. Oh, so that's a plus. Of their pelvis almost they have what? negative penis and so um i like to think of it as like ice fishing when you have to get a foley catheter in there so it's just a, a hole in there that you have to kind of stuff things down and hope you get in there it, it becomes problematic oh wow mm. have you seen That's any like circumcision that. injuries uh no actually i haven't mm-hmm. seen any circumcision. would that go to the er well i had one patient I work on the floor, so I had one patient that went through the ER with a respiratory illness, got up to us, and then the mom was like, oh, by the way, I think something's wrong with his circumcision. We opened the diaper, and his penis is blue. Oh, I've heard yeah. of blue balls, <laughs> but not, not a, a blue penis. This is emergency. <laughs> Safe. Yeah, that's, that's Saved bad. it, though. Hey, good job. <laughs> High five. Yeah. (laughs) Not necessarily related to (laughs) surgery. Okay, we need a whole (laughs) podcast on (laughs) penile injuries. (laughs) Well, the other, um, I guess, not correction, but uh, last time on is I was talking to my friend Chris, and so... Apparently, <laughs> you know, I've made such a big deal about this bow God put in the sky to uh, after the flood <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to remind himself not to flood and kill everyone again. And he was like, dude, it's a rainbow. <laughs> I had no clue. I was picturing like a bow and arrow bow. I was yelling it at the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, I guess. But, I mean, uh, yeah. I guess I just didn't, like, I think it would remember. be Hardly that remember. that mythological. Right. That out in the open of how... Because by that point in the story, it's like trying... To, like, it's given us, like, blueprints of the arc and, like, geography and shit to try to make it sound legitimate. Like, I guess I was just kind of, like, in a different headspace where I was out of, like, looking for mythological corollaries. And I think that's one of the reasons why the very devout and evangelical are so mad that uh, the LGBTQ plus uh, community have uh, co-opted the rainbow. (laughs) Really? Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the reasons, because there's like, no, that's our thing. (laughs) That's like, crazy. Oh, too bad, we gotta know. All right, so rainbows. I get it. I think that's a, a pretty cool one, though. I like that. Like you mentioned, like I also like loved mythology when I was a kid. Like I thought it was great. I mean, it's basically comic books. I mean, you got all these different heroes. You got powers. You got monsters. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Are you into also, mythology? Um, I yeah, I, just, uh, I don't feel like they've done a whole lot. They yeah, just, we haven't really got any monsters yet. No. <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons why I uh, really prefer the Greek, Roman, and Norse mythology to 
the biblical mythology was because the idea of the pantheistic mm. mythology uh, just struck a chord to me it's much more humanistic they're deities with powers but they also have flaws and foibles and all that and there has to be sacrifices for powers it's not just omniscience like Odin had to rip out his eye, impale mm. himself on a spear, and then hang himself from a tree so that he could gain more wisdom and things like that, as opposed to God just is and did in his omniscient, except <laughs> he keeps making mistakes. <laughs> he promises that he won't make them anymore and then does it anyway. <laughs> well, we might change your opinion today because we got a big one. Today is a big big story Sodom and Gomorrah so we've hinted at this well not just hinted at like it's been completely spoiled by previous chapters but uh I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this I I used to be really big into sodomy but uh recently I'm more into Gomorrah -y. <laughs> <laughs> Gomorrah -y. yeah <laughs> it's it's uh pretty gross all right so <laughs> so this next bit um we left off saying we needed 10 righteous in the city of sodom oh that's right we gotta have 10 otherwise they're fucked i'm calling bullshit i don't think i think he finds more than 10 and he doesn't care destroys mm. it anyway you got any predictions steve uh yeah i'm guessing um either there's gonna be no righteous people in there except for uh Abraham and uh, mm, he's his not kid. there. Yeah, he's I think probably... Lot is there. Oh, that's right. Is Lot Abraham's kid? He's like his nephew. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nephew. All right. right. I'm guessing it's just going to be Lot and his mm. Lot. Everyone else is going to be unrighteous. <laughs> yeah, they're dead. We know they're dead. Everybody knows they're now. dead. <laughs> All right. So chapter 19. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Partying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we just we don't want to waste our night getting our feet washed in your square ass house. We're in Sodom. <laughs> and he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. <laughs> <laughs> Biblically? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. I mean, it's... Uh, they I don't know. make friends. <laughs> yeah, it's like bring them out here right now. We want to say hi and, and have Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> want to find out what makes them tick? What's their favorite book? <laughs> Not any hobbies. It says young and old, all the people of Sodom from every quarter wanted to wanted to bang these two angels. <laughs> Hot ass angels. I guess so. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> you think you know where this is going? I think I know where this is going. <laughs> this is like Abraham and Sarai all over again, uh -huh. where he's just like, oh. I got this. Uh, I got this wife. <laughs> well, no, he didn't. He said, "I got this sister." Sodom. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, because he was pretending she was his sister. Yeah, yeah. Oh okay. All right. So he says, "I've, 
I've got two daughters who have not known man, so like they're virgins. Two virgins. Yeah. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore they came under the shadow of my roof. Well, but what did then the daughters do it too? The fucking daughters are under your roof, bro. Yeah, they live under your roof, asshole. <laughs> yeah. but, no, but these two strangers, something about these guys. I mean, does he know don't, they're angels? Don't bang these guys. My daughters, yeah, go nuts. You think he knows also, they're angels? I imagine these people are so horned up and crazy <laughs> that they're like in mass just <laughs> shaking the walls of this house to bang these newcomers <laughs> yet for some reason his daughters have been untouched all this time like how how is that happening i don't know and it's, it's... Yeah, like disguised as rocks this entire time <laughs> <laughs> well it's strange that he said that it says like make sure to let you know like young and old <laughs> like everybody I mean, Abraham apparently uh, first started having kids when he was 99, so in the Bible, age is not a problem. Not an yeah. issue, yeah. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand, and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. <laughs> Still adamant about it, though. <laughs> yeah, even blind. They're like feeling all around for that doorknob. Just like... <laughs> they gotta fuck these angels. <laughs> and with a mission. Jesus. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> well, like, what? if you could make them blind, why wouldn't you just make them go away? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, they're just angels. I mean, they just got blind powers. <laughs> I mean, they are kind of like X Men. <laughs> and the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides? son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the lord and the lord hath sent us to destroy it and lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law which married his daughters and said up get you out of this place for the lord will destroy this city but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. <laughs> like, okay, so I guess whatever. he has a lot of daughters because a minute ago his daughters were virgins and now they're married. Oh, good point. They're, they're married, but they don't have sex. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> whatever. Lot's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, uh, not my two girls. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, Take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed with the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot, he said unto them, O, oh, not so, my lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. So... Did they even look for these ten righteous people? <laughs> it doesn't say they did. No, they just came and hung out. And they were like, Lot's like, come in here, have some bread, some unleavened bread. And they're like, no thanks. You got to have Lot, his wife. He's got two daughters, two son-in-laws. Yeah, that's six. That's six. Not ten. 
Oh, I guess that's the point. I guess Lot should have had some grandkids or something. <laughs> Get up to the big number ten. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. So I guess li he's thinks, I guess little cities are less sinful than the big bad city. <laughs> Evil city women and all that. <laughs> and he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. <laughs> this is a lot. You're going to have to translate some of this. I mean, he's just like, the angel said, run away to the mountain. And he said, I'm going to live in the mountain. If I live in the mountain, I'm going to fucking <laughs> like starve to death. Let me go to this little baby city. <laughs> like, you made like a big point to say, like, it's a tiny one. Please. <laughs> and I think he said, okay. Like, it's, sometimes it's unclear who's talking, because there's lots of just, like, he's thrown around with no proper names. <laughs> yeah. God commands you to go to the mountain. I don't want to go to the mountain. Can I go to this other town? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and therefore, the city was called Zoar. Like, it does that a lot, where it's just like, here's this big, long-ass, like, meandering story, and then it just says, therefore, we named it Bethusahel. <laughs> Where the hell is Gomorrah? <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, all Sodom, right? Yeah, that was all Sodom. Which should be called Sodom and Zoar. <laughs> Good point. Well, maybe Gomorrah's coming up. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Zoar is even oh. more rapey. <laughs> I just thought it was a cool sounding. It's a cool name. It's better than Sodom. Gomorrah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better than Gomer. The Adventures of Sodom. Better than Gomer, you're right. <laughs> even Ham. Yeah, Ham. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, who did nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, so dumb question. Yeah. Gomorrah is just the neighboring city, right? That's how I'm picturing it. Like, I'm picturing like twin cities, right? Yeah. Steve? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it sounds like it, but as far as I know, like, Gamora wasn't, like, trying to bang down his door to bang the angels. Like, That's that, true. That sounds like a Sodom thing. That's true. So, Gamora, so far, hasn't been mentioned until now. I mean, is this just... Yeah, like, and they were really uh... cool, too. Like, during, like, the Battle of the Five Kings or whatever, like, those two kings, like, ran away and saved Lot. Like, I don't know why... I guess they're just wicked. They're just bad. Bad sinner people. I guess just acceptable losses. Like <laughs> angels, like city raising powers can't be finally controlled and just Gomorrah got caught up in it. I guess. And then the Lord rained upon Sodom upon and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. All right. First mention of brimstone. Yes. Yeah. So like, it's been a, like, I've always wondered like about like when like hell has fire and brimstone and i guess it's early right here so this is a, and this is a big story this is a big story that oh this is a huge story a this is a huge story like um, it's not that great so far we should probably start cataloging angel powers at this point so oh. we have blinding and <laughs> brimstone raining which i mean sounds like demons to me yeah, those sound like demon yeah. powers yeah but yeah, what do I know? Just a big also, old Bible it dummy. It depends whether it was magical blinding or if they just like physically blinded. <laughs> yeah, they ran out and just started poking. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just over and over, just <laughs> boink, boink. <laughs> good old eye stabbing. Three Stooges style. Yeah. <laughs> that was before the defense was <laughs> invented. <laughs> <laughs> the vertical hand between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of those cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she 
became a pillar of salt. Nosy Nancy. <laughs> yeah. Wait, don't yeah. people say that is a positive thing? What? Maybe you, not. No, like a pillar people of the community. Like pillar oh, of pillar of, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a pillar of salt. <laughs> It is weird, though. Like, it's a weird thing to for her to be now. Yeah. Also, a pillar of salt. Not like a statue of salt, but like a pillar. Because isn't that like a, a support beam? Yeah, like, like, a, a, like a vertical column. Yeah, so did she change into a vertical column of salt? <laughs> I not, guess. She always turned into like a lady made out of salt. I, mean, I guess just like add it to the list of angel powers. <laughs> Turn you into architectural features. I mean, that spices. has got to be like, got to, it's got to have like a real world corollary, right? Like, that's got to be a reference to something from the time when this story was being passed around. Like, and she became the pillar of salt. And everybody's like, oh, it's the pillar. That's her. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's no way. It's just so specific and weird. Like it could have been anything. Like she could have just turned to stone or whatever. Yeah, well, salt's so I'm weird. not a historian, but I'd have to imagine that salt was pretty valuable at the time. So yeah, like you would think, right? Unless there's like salt mines everywhere that I don't know about, but uh, like a pillar yeah, of salt seems like how. it'd be uh, you know worth something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> like worse things you could turn into. I guess so. Like, like hey, you... lost a wife, but I got a bunch of soul. <laughs> Score. Silver linings. <laughs> and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. <laughs> okay, so I mean like it's a volcano, right? Like Fire brimstone goes down into the plain, I guess where these two cities are, and destroys them. Yeah. So this has to be like Oh, oh, so like, you know how in uh, Italy, where all the people turn into like Is ash? she just ashes Is and they don't ashes? know how to explain it? Yeah. Dude, I think we saw, I think we, we may have missed the rainbow, <laughs> but I think we nailed this one. So you think this one was a, a fable built around volcanic activity? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's gotta be. Because like all those people, where is it, Steve? Pompeii. Pompeii. Okay. Pompeii? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Pompeii, yeah. I was like when I couldn't remember Gimli's name. <laughs> I was like, what, do you know that place? It's in Italy. It got destroyed by a giant volcano. And they all turn into like white ashen people that look like yeah. salt. I suppose. Yeah, I suppose you could. Steve looks skeptical, but you're on my side. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I think it also could just be, you know, a bunch of drunken rapist accident <laughs> to a town <laughs> yeah i guess so and just like hey um uh, yeah i totally lost my wife <laughs> somehow uh no that's her there rock thing <laughs> salty rock yeah god did that. <laughs> don't go looking for her body she's a salt rock <laughs> oh jeez. And Lot went up it's out a of, lot of a true crime podcast. So not, <laughs> just trying to sneak that under the radar. Is he sus? <laughs> yeah. Is Lot sus in this? Oh yeah. Okay. And Lot went up out of Zoar and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. So I mean, he, what he still went to the mountain. He like begged God to go to Zoar. I guess he's scared Maybe he's gonna get volcano. Got lost in the hithers and thithers. I guess so. What he's happened like, to hey, the son-in-laws? Hasn't mentioned them. 
But yeah. didn't the son-in-laws say like, uh, "Hey, Mott, you're full of shit." Oh, that's or right. You know? They said oh, you're joking. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I was like, "Whatever, crazy old man. I'm gonna stay here and be weird with your daughters." <laughs> <laughs> I've co-opted the Sodom lifestyle. Uh, I guess so. I guess they died with those other Sodomites. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. <laughs> oh, I don't like <laughs> that this. Is that right? <laughs> I think, yeah, okay. Come, no. let us make our father drink wine. And we will no. lie with him. And we will lie with him that we may preserve seed of mm, our father. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay, this this doubles down a lot being sus. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but before, just, hey, everyone, bang my sexy daughter. <laughs> just, oh, oh, I lost my wife in all the confusion, and she's a salt lady. I guess I just, oh. Oh, oh, I'm drunk. Don't take advantage of me, sexy daughters. Uh, I think Lot's just a straight creep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then they still, they pin, like, again, this is like Noah all over again. Lot's a fucking creep, but somehow, like, still to this day, like, this is the story where they say sodomy's a sin and all gay people are going to hell. I mean, it's all, this is... The only thing they go off of is this stupid story here. It does sound in line with uh, certain conservative views these days of a uh, gay bad, but you have to carry the baby of your incestuous rape. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. So, uh, biblical values. I guess so. None of this also, makes sense. they don't make any mention of homosexuality or anal sex or anything. They just said these people were real horned up and wanted to bang angels. Yeah, and they wanted to know the angels. That's it. Yeah. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he perceived not when she lay down nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold! I lay yesternight with my father. <laughs> Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. Why? Why can't he marry somebody else? <laughs> I don't know. I guess because he's he's scared to go to Zoar. I don't know. There are other cities, though. He could go marry anyone else. Yeah, that's that is true. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Disturbing. This is disturbing. Like, I mean, th- uh, I don't, I don't really know what to say other than like this is like I just, a holy I, book. <laughs> I feel like Lot's playing the victim. Mm-hmm. I also don't understand why, in this story, like one thing leads to another. I don't understand how it happens. None of it makes sense. I mean, it 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 does sound like y'all were saying like. It sounds like some like an alcoholic's excuse. Like I blacked out, and they must have had sex with me <laughs> while I was out. I knew not when it they laid down, nor when they got up. For them to preserve my seed. <laughs> yeah, they just. That's what they're worried about, not me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <sighs> Maybe if I didn't wash the feet of those strange men, I found. <laughs> All right, this is gross. I hate it. Let's finish this one up. <laughs> Everyone else in that town is a weirdo. No, <laughs> yeah. Feet of strange hot men. <laughs> <sighs> and they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose, and she lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn... They have to walk in backwards with a sheet. (laughs) I guess so. (laughs) That is like one of the best visuals that we've had so far. (laughs) Of the two brothers, like, doing everything they can not to see. (laughs) I love it. So funny. 
And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name Binamimi. <laughs> Binami. Oh. Like the Moab National Park? I guess so. Where's that? It's in Utah, I think. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we were thinking that maybe like when so we're actually going on vacation to utah uh coming up we were thinking it might be fun to do like a special edition like reading of like a chapter of the book of mormon while we we're out there <laughs> that would be great one surprise i've already seen i was looking at menus at local restaurants and they put a note on the alcohol menu that in order to order a pitcher of margaritas you must have three adults at the table <laughs> wow i feel like that's discriminating oh. against non mormons well, you don't want to get too drunk <laughs> your daughters might sleep I... with you or like you might lie out naked and curse your grandchild for like all of eternity true <laughs> evils of alcohol why are you doing this, Grandpa? Your dad saw my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and the younger, she also bare a son and called his name Benami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And that is the end of chapter 19. So that is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Gomorrah who did nothing? Yeah, poor Gamora. That is like not fair. But in uh oh, got his groove back. <laughs> in Guardians of the Galaxy, though, it definitely feels like Gamora is the ignored one. Right? Yeah, I... She doesn't get a lot of attention. So. I don't know. She's a lot of people's favorites. Yes. She's cool. Doesn't get a lot of dialogue though, <laughs> but <laughs> none of the women in the Bible do. Yeah, well, some of them got attention, but never good. <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, so this story, like this one I heard a lot um, whenever I went to church. Like this one was brought up pretty often. And it was pretty much, a, I guess, kind of like, you know, like Steve was saying, like a Baptist type story. It was a scare tactic. Like this was one of the ones where it was like, Oh, well, like Sodom and Gomorrah, they were, everybody was evil. Everybody was sinning. Everybody's a sinner. And look what happened to them. And it's more used as like to condemn like popular culture a lot, like, or just society in general. Like, oh, everybody's wearing them baggy Jinko jeans, <laughs> sinning <laughs> with the little skateboards. <laughs> Definitely dating yourself there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, it's the same thing here. It's like all those, all those kids, they're, they're TikToks, they're doing the TikTok dances. <laughs> yeah, let's see how you can TikTok dance after you turn to salt. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but yeah, it's again, wild. also, it just seems to me like God is kind of a drunken absentee father figure in the bible so far he's just like oh you are terrible and i'm all gonna drown you except for you you i like yeah that's he's exactly like, what he's doing i promise i'll never do it again and then it's like oh i haven't been around for a while now you're all evil again i'm gonna send some of my angels to blind you and burn you <laughs> yeah <laughs> you i, I like. said i wouldn't do it <laughs> i didn't <laughs> say my angels wouldn't <laughs> So you I like. You're okay. Like just, you know, go bang your daughters. Oh, so is Lot? Like you were saying, like every time like God picks a favorite, there's like a bad guy. There's a cane to every Abel. Is Lot the the cane to Abraham's Abel? Is he a bad guy in this to Christians? Well to the Christians, Lot is the good guy. He's the one righteous man in a town of immorality. Oh, it's the women's fault. It's, it's the daughter's yeah. fault. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had sex with them. He was raped by his daughter. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, okay. He doesn't remember any of it. Yeah, he had no he idea. Now, if he, 
he woke up midway and saw it, he would have to condemn them and curse them the same way that the Canaanites were. <laughs> yeah, curse their children. But he slept through it, thankfully, so they're still good. But only <laughs> if you see them do it is it bad. <laughs> yeah. If you look at your father's penis and he knows it, then uh-uh, game over. Game you over. Have sex with your father's penis and <laughs> doesn't know it, then that's good. <laughs> way to go did you expect there to be the bible to be this weird no (laughs) no this story had lots of twists and turns that i wasn't ready for yeah i do have to say at the beginning i said uh gamora e is pretty gross but uh this is this is way grosser than gamora e yeah yeah Uh The mountain, <laughs> the mountain pass is definitely way grosser. This yeah. is weird. Oh, uh, one thing, a uh, fun little note I found out earlier when I was doing my research on circumcision in uh, the Bible that you're reading there, I uh, think the same in the Torah, this Old Testament. Abraham was 99 when he did his. Oh, that's a nice Bible. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was a little self-conscious when we... was 99 when he uh, did the first circumcision, when he circumcised himself. In uh, Islam, uh, the prophet Abraham was 80 years old, and he did his own circumcision with a hatchet. Oh. (laughs) So I'm just wondering what people in that town saw an 80-year-old man cut off the tip of his penis with a hatchet and standing there with bloody <laughs> penis in hand proclaiming god told me to do this all of you need to do this line up and they all said yeah that sounds good <laughs> yeah i don't know i i, I don't know what where, where the start of that like i mean Oh boy, we talked about that. That is just, that one. It weirds me out. I don't like this story. No? I don't like Lot. No, Lot sucks. No, he's he's a bad man with a bad plan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he comes back, but like I said, this is like I said, similar to Noah's story. I hear all the time about all the sinners, um, in Sodom who like were super bad people and God had to destroy them. I even heard of the pillar of uh, the girl looking back and turning it to salt. I've heard of that lots of times. Um, Never did they bring up the the random sleeping with his daughters. They just like skim right past it. (laughs) Give this one a big thumbs down. Probably the worst story so far least favorite so far least favorite yeah i mean even Babel was better and that was like a sentence Mm -hmm. yeah this one is troublesome (laughs) well i mean maybe that maybe there is some preacher out there who (laughs) yeah there's probably definitely a preacher out there (laughs) who likes this story and like tries to figure out some way to use it in his sermon. I'd be interested to know like like what kind of weird lesson they make out of that. I just don't understand why couldn't Lot go go get a stepmom for the daughters? Yeah, I don't know. Seems like an easy solution. Yeah, that would be a better solution for sure. Or just like mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> just don't remarry. Just be be lonely for a little while. That's better too. <laughs> Let your seed die. That's yeah. okay too. <laughs> yeah, they're very concerned about spreading the seed, not just the daughters, but everybody in the Bible. Also, the daughters are the spread seed. Like he's already succeeded <laughs> yeah. in doing so. <laughs> yeah, simple, simple genetics again. <laughs> just but like, you gotta have boys. Gonna sure. Yeah. Gotta have some boys. But yeah, they could go find new stepsons who are maybe like (laughs) more credulous. (laughs) It's their fault. They should have believed him. It just goes into a lot being sus again, I imagine. Daughter's family. Can't we just go to Zoar? I mean, it's (laughs) just like a town or no, God said we have to go to a cave. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm drunk again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to drink a lot. Like, they didn't have, like, spirits and hard liquor back then. They just had wine. I mean, you'd have to get, drink a lot of wine. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> open, yeah. I feel like I end, like, every reading with the same defeated. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, and it's weird because every time I've heard this story mentioned ever by, like, preachers and ministers and all that, and the very few times I've been in a church, or when I, it's always, like, you know, don't be a sinner, or God's going to smote you. Mm-hmm. Also, listen to God's word, because he fucking means it, and he'll turn you to salt. <laughs> if you look back, like, she just there's a huge fire behind them just people are screaming in agony there's explosions they can feel the heat on their back and like maybe like an ember lands on her shoulder and just instinctively just human reaction looks back then boom salt (laughs) it's just like that's that's fucked up it's like hey you're my chosen good ones go get out of here but i'm gonna put this weird stupid nonsensical caveat (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. It's like, a, it's like, like why does he care that like element to this thing? Just look if you don't look back, because if you do, I'm gonna turn you into baking goods. Yeah, why does he care? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> when you want them, like you would want them to see the other people suffering and learning from their lesson, you know? Yeah. I guess. Maybe. I don't know. And also, like, what a flimsy fucking reason to condemn someone's sexuality. (laughs) Like, this story, I feel like, is the only reason why, like, evangelicals, like, use to support their, like, anti-gay. I mean, maybe there's more. I don't know. Like, there's probably more. (laughs) <laughs> there's more in like Leviticus and shit but uh, even that is real flimsy too but this is this know, is the one I always hear that these people are sinners and they want to have sex with man it's like yeah but isn't the more pertinent fact that they were rapists <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that, isn't that the point that should be driven home not necessarily that they wanted to have sex with men but they wanted to forcibly have sex with men against their will <laughs> yeah all the young and old of the city <laughs> yeah just... it's kind of like that that like if everybody else is crazy you know maybe you're the one that crazy i think like it's pretty clear that lot is the one odd man out at all of this i think so yeah it's like, so it's funny that when you tell the story literally everyone is a sinner <laughs> except for you <laughs> Yeah. Your wife ignores God. Your daughters are rapists. Everyone in the town is a rapist. <laughs> All you want to do is wash strange hot dudes' feet. <laughs> yeah. like, you're, you're the, you're the good one. You're the chosen one. And it's just like, yeah, no, man. Well, I think that's probably a good place to close up the old Bible. Say goodbye to Watercolor Jesus until next week. Thank you, Steve, for joining us on the podcast. That was really fun to have our first uh, guest. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Cool. All right. So, till next time. I want to thank. Uh, I want to thank Terry, Terry Lynn again. <laughs> I usually thank her at the beginning, uh, but. Oh, yeah. you know, I'll let you end with a thank you. Always. Terry Lynn Bradford. Thank you. Executive producer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Bible dummies. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, dum-dums. Yeah. <laughs>